Hey guys, it's manager Kylie and in today's video I'm going to share with you what a day in the life of a high school athletic director does and what they do in their job. So today I'm going to share with you some of the job details about being a high school athletic director, some of the different roles and pieces of information that you need to know, and some of the different things that you do on a daily basis or on a weekly basis or just some of the aspects of the job. I'm going to be doing this for a lot of roles in sport management and I'd like to make a series out of it. So if you're interested in any other sport management roles that you would like to learn more about, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And if you're interested in more sports administration videos, videos just like this, definitely the subscribe button, turn on the bell so you get notified every time I upload as I post a new video every single Wednesday at 2pm Eastern time and we're going to dive into what it's like to be a high school athletic director. So I actually got to experience firsthand what it was like to be a high school athletic director. I did one of my internships as a high school athletic director, working directly with the athletic director at a local high school to me. So it was one-on-one -on -one with him, seeing what his day-to-day -day looked like, along with some of the different aspects and roles that happen on a daily basis or a weekly basis, or just some extra projects that you may come across um, in having that role. So one key thing is the role of a high school athletic director, no two days are the same. You're going to be in contact with different people on every day. You're going to have a different schedule for sports every day. So there's no two days that are the same. So some of the aspects of your job, one big thing is game day management. So anytime you have some sort of game, you there's a lot of things that need to be coordinated at the game itself. You need to make sure all the equipment's set up. So if it's for a football game, you need to make sure that you have the yard markers out. You might need to have the sticks out depending on what you're doing. If you're having a basketball game, you need to have benches, you need to have a scorer's table, bleachers, whatever you need to have prepared for that game, you may to make sure that you have all that. You also, if you're selling tickets, need to make sure you have somebody to sell the tickets as well as the tickets to sell, a cash box. You might want to have, make sure you have your athletic trainer there. There's lots of different aspects that go into making sure that everything on a game day runs smoothly. There's also, you want to make sure that the other team shows up, the officials show up, and some of that goes into scheduling, which I'll talk about in a moment. But there's a lot of things that go into each individual game day and each individual store and making sure that their games run smoothly. Another thing with that is equipment management. So making sure that you have all the equipment each team needs at the beginning of their season, whether that is volleyballs, basketballs, footballs, or whether that's uniforms, making sure that each team has the uniform they need. And then at the end of the season, if you collect uniforms, so some schools, I know they, the team keeps their uniforms, especially at the college level, the individuals keep their uniforms. But at the high school level, if you reuse uniforms, you want to make sure that you're able to collect all the uniforms, keep them organized on where they are stored so that you're able to easily find them when you need them for the next season, make sure they're washed, everything like that. So it's very important to stay organized, have lots of labeling in your boxes and stuff so that you know which sport everything is. So when the fall season comes around, you're able to find all the fall sports and pull out all their equipment and you're not overlapping with winter sports and different sports like that. You want to make sure that you have each sport and each season all together so that you're able to find everybody's equipment nice and easily. Within this, you also want to make sure that you know who got each piece of equipment so that when it's returned, you're able to make sure that everything did get returned. So if you have different numbers on uniforms, you want to make sure that everything did get returned and then you have all the uniforms again. Another big piece is overseeing personnel. So this could be within your department. So if you have more than one person just in your athletic department, you're overseeing that as well as overseeing, make sure there's an athletic trainer at your games, officials at your games, game workers. If you have somebody doing the clock, if you have somebody overseeing personnel there. So you might have somebody that's job is just to make sure that the fans are not causing any trouble. You may have any sort of personnel, camera, videographer, anything like that, that is under your discretion. Some teams let the coach do the videographer, but so any personnel that's going to be near your court or at your games, you want to make sure that nothing problematic is happening, whether you're just overseeing the personnel at the event or also just overseeing personnel to oversee the personnel at the event. So you want to make sure you have all that together. There's a lot of different people and moving parts in sports. There's the people on the court. There's the people in the stands. There's lots of moving pieces. So you want to make sure that you're on top of all the different people that are going to be there. Another thing is keeping track of department finances. Sports are an expensive industry. Most college athletics programs don't have a revenue source that is high enough to offset their expenses. And that's very true about high school. So where is your revenue coming in? So whether that's 
students paying for the sport. So, so we played a like fee to play each one of our sports, whether that's students paying for different pieces of equipment, whether that's the town paying for decent, different pieces of equipment, the school, the superintendent's office, anything. Who is paying for the different things in your department or you're getting ticket fundraiser, anything. Where is the money coming in? And then also your expenses. Sports are expensive. Where What do you need to do to buy uniforms? Do you buy uniforms every year, every other year, every few years? You, do you need new equipment each year? Generally, you need a couple new basketballs, a couple new volleyballs every year. As things get worn down throughout the season, you're gonna want new pieces of equipment for the next season, and it just makes it new and bright. So you might want new basketballs, volleyballs, footballs. You're gonna need a new set of softballs, especially for game days. A lot of teams will need brand new game day balls each year so that you have brand new, this everything not worn in. So you might wanna get new game day balls that they can just turn their old game day balls into practice balls. You just need to be, understand that and understand what type of equipment you're gonna need. As well for finances, do you need to pay different personnel to work? work? You need to pay your coaches. Um, what else do you have that involves expenses? Do you need to pay for buses? Do you need to pay, um, even if you don't need to pay for buses, do you need to pay for gas for some sort of van? All that goes into the different expenses that the team needs. Another thing you're gonna have is a lot of meetings. So you're going to have meetings both with school administration at the school you're working with just to schedule different events if the school has different events going on working with that as well as working with any problems that may come up within athletics that are relevant to the school. And then you're also going to work with other schools. You're going to work with people in your league. You're going to have meetings with your league. You're going to have meetings with other coaches with the state league if you're in some sort of like state division or any type of seating if you oversee a certain sport. So like I know my athletic director oversaw volleyball you oversaw hockey so each season one of the athletic directors in our league would oversee a certain sport so do you have meetings with that team and those different teams within your league there's lots of different meetings that come up do you have meetings with parents that have problems do you have meetings with students that you're having issues with there's gonna be plenty of meetings that you're gonna have to talk one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting with different people trying to make sure that everything runs smoothly within athletics another big piece of this job is scheduling when you're balancing multiple schedules, it can be hard, but it's important to make sure that everything runs smoothly. So for fall sports, for example, you're balancing football, you're balancing volleyball, field hockey, cross country. There's lots of different schedules. Soccer, depending on where you are in the country and what sports you play each season, you're balancing a lot of schedules. So you wanna make sure that each team has a practice schedule, each team has a game schedule. You're not double booking field space. You also wanna make sure that for away games, all the buses are booked. For all the home games, you wanna make sure you have officials booked. You also have workers for the game. There's lots of different schedules to balance to make sure that you have all the personnel you need at the games and that your teams are able to have a successful season and get in the practices they need, have the spaces they need to do those practices. So I know for my hometown, we always had to balance field schedules because there was only a certain amount of fields, but all the games were played on one field. So you had to make sure that if somebody had a game that day, nobody was practicing on that field and vice versa. If there was no games that day, all the practice schedules they could use that field and whether who had what time at that field who had it in right after school who had it later balancing all of those schedules for gym space there's only so many gyms so for winter sports making sure that everybody has access to the gym but has it for a fair amount of time and are able to balance the different schedules between all the different teams that need the gym space you might have to also organize award ceremonies so if your league or your team does any sort of award ceremonies even state of award ceremonies. You might have to organize these, make sure that you have all the awards if you're giving them out, make sure the athletes know what's going on, the coaches know what's going on, do parents are there if you have parents at this, any sort of award ceremony that you do for athletics, you gotta organize that. And then one big thing is if you have any sort of capital expenditures or big budget items, so whether that's getting new lighting at the field, whether that's building new buildings, reseeding the fields, putting down new turf, rebuilding a track, putting up new fencing, building dugouts, anything like that. Any of those big money projects, where is that money coming from? Is it coming from your teams? Is it coming from the school department? You have to fundraise it yourself. Where's the money coming from? Well, how long is the project gonna take? Who do you need to work with for the project? Who is the project going to affect? There's a lot that goes into some of those big budget items. So it's important to keep track of those as well. So that's some of the big roles of an athletic director. There are some little things on the day-to-day 
day that they might be doing just organizing paperwork different things like that it all depends on how many people you also have in their department if they're the only ones in the department they're doing every single one of these things possibly on a daily basis if they have some sort of assistant or even multiple assistants within their department they might have people that have different focuses somebody's focus might be finances somebody's might be administration there's lots of different things that they might have within that department so it does depend on the size of your department but there's lots of aspects that go into the role of the athletic director and even if you have people in your department you're overseeing all those people so anything that happens is on you you are the head of that department any big event that happens is on you you're the face of it so you want to make sure that you have everything together I also wanted to talk a little bit about getting into the role of being an athletic director and some of the different paths you may take being a high school athletic director, there's a few different paths that you can take to get to that role. And sometimes that's specific to what the job entails. So some high schools, they combine their athletic director with their athletic trainer. Some may also have their athletic director be a vice principal. Some may have them also teach during the day. It all depends on budget. Some just have the athletic director and that's all they do all day. So it kind of depends on the school's budget and then what they're able to do for resources. If you have a much smaller school, there's a likely chance that that high school athletic director is also doing another role in the school. If you have a much larger school, you may have the budget to just have a full-time high school athletic director that doesn't have to do another role outside of being that athletic director. And that can really influence your path. Generally, a lot of people start with coaching some sport or sport. So whether they're teaching in the district or doing something else within the district, they may also coach. And then moving up from coaching, they may want to also teach in that district. You may also want to be a vice principal in the district. If you work in that district and you're also coaching, that's a good path, get you into the athletic athletics but also get you into some of that school that would help you move to being the athletic director if that also involved teaching in the district or being an administrator you may also start out as the athletic trainer for a school and then eventually move into being an assistant athletic director and then fully into the athletic director because you were the athletic trainer there's lots of paths that you could take in high school it's not as concrete but if you're interested in being a high school athletic director i would definitely recommend getting into the job and just checking out what it's like even just if you can try to be an assistant coach if you can do an intern with an athletic director working with other people within high school athletics can definitely help you whether that's just even being a game day personnel and working just the home games and doing something like that collecting tickets get your foot into the door and start working within high school athletics that will help you get onto that path to being the athletic director if that's what you're interested in and again if you're interested in learning about any other job within sports administration, sports management, and kind of what the path is to get there, what the different job entails, what your day-to-day -day looks like, definitely let me know in the comments down below. I'd be happy to give you that information. Let me know what kind of job you're looking for in sports. And if you are interested in learning more, definitely hit the subscribe button, turn the bell so you get notified every time I upload, and I will see you guys next Wednesday.